Folks, welcome back. We're going to start a lesson now entitled The Passover for Christians. Explain, yes, folks, it's to be observed, but not in the way that they've done in the Old Testament. I'm going to explain to you go. Don't get upset when I tell you this because it's just Bible, all right? Well, if you want to, you might want to pair the juice and the bread in a little bit, too. I, I thought we were doing it right at the end. We, uh, it's going to be part of the lesson. Okay. Okay? So anyway, <clears throat> let's start in Genesis chapter 12. Now the Passover, according to Scripture, is on the fourth day of a bib, which is about April. It's the first first month of the uh, Israel calendar, and it's about the fourteenth day. Of, it's it's in April, it's springtime for us, and uh, that's when the Passover is supposed to be observed. And if you look on calendar today, you'll still see it on there. Mm -hmm. It's still there, okay? And it's it's a, a holy day. If it's still for them, some people to believe in, okay? The, the, the Israelites, if you will. And then back then when they started, they, you know, they used a shank of lamb and bill of herbs and different things to do the Passover. Now, I want to show you how the Lord God, by His grace, now that just in this section, get ready for it a little bit. Uh, by His grace, brought in the, the Passover in the New Testament and did some things that slightly modified, but it's still done the same, fulfilled the same teachings and prophecy. In Genesis chapter 12, we're going to find for Abraham was called out and took us to, was to make a covenant before God. Now this is important. Follow this. In, verse, in chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord had said unto Abraham, Abram, his name was not changed Abraham yet, was it? <laughs> Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless him that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70, 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Now, a lot of people take that to mean the word to uphold Israel no matter what it does. That's not what the Bible is saying. Uh, it isn't. I don't have time getting there right now. Now, let's go to chapter 15. Making a covenant. Before a holy God. Now I want you to pay attention to me. Listen to me. God never makes a covenant without something being sacrificed. Mm -hmm. wow. Now is that important to know that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blood must be shed to make a covenant. Right. In verse chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, oh, said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and that, and that the steward of my house is Eli Eli Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou, uh, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. These other words, he said, If any other child born, if I live without this, I have an heir, is the heir. Mm -hmm. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Thou shalt not be, thou, thou, this shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now to the, toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said to them, So shall thy seed be. Now just, just, just stop and think a minute. Have you ever looked up at heaven on a, on a bright, clear night? No. Can, you, can you count the stars? No. No. Yet we think that a few million people in Israel is all there is of Israel. Now think a minute. The seed of Israel has been scattered all over the world, and we are part of that seed. We are a tribe of Ephraim as a whole. Some in Asa, but we're mostly Ephraim in this country. We are the tribe of Israel of Ephraim. And I can prove that biblically. I've done it before, and I wouldn't say if I didn't come prove it. So the heir of Abraham have been scattered across the world. The German, the Germanic people, the Swedish people are all heir of Abraham. Now, I can tell you what nations are if you like sometimes, if you'd be interested in that. But anyway. And he brought him. He's got, got that. And he believed in. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that, that brought thee out of the land, uh, out of Ur of the Chaldees, to give thee this land inherited. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Something about to happen here. Mm -hmm. Now, as you read this. Please bear in mind what Christ did on the cross. Mm -hmm. Did he make a covenant with us? Did Christ make a covenant with the church? Oh, yes. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 17. There you go. 
And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against the other, but the birds abide he not. <clears throat> now when you split them down the middle, lay them open. <coughs> okay? <coughs> and when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and pay attention, and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. Before Abraham even had an heir, he foretold a captivity in Egypt for four hundred years. Right. What a coincidence. Well, ain't God smart? And, and also that nation whom, thou, whom, whom they shall serve will I judge, and after will they come out with great substance. Now let's just compare it right now to the day. How many of y'all know, with, without being super spiritual, understand that we're slaves in our own nation? Mm -hmm. yeah. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. We're in bondage. Yeah. Do they tax us in every way we turn? Mm -hmm. Do they control your bodies? Do they not try to control your mind? You put them in public health holes called schools, the children's minds are warped, they're, they're perverted. Is that mm -hmm. not part of slavery? Yes. Is it against the law now to even think out loud? The lady in Colorado mentions Kim Trails. They take her child. Is that bondage? Yeah, we're back into the Egypt again as a, as a people, the church. But deliverance is coming. Let's go a little further. And thou shalt go to thy father in peace. Thou shalt be, shalt be buried in a good old age. Now, and, but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for, and for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The sin of the Amorites, now listen, this is important. I always have time to go to all this. Nations are allowed so much time and a limited amount of sin before God judges them. Mm -hmm. That's what you hear, what just read right there, right? Yeah. He said, it isn't time, it isn't time for you to come back to this land until 400 years is up because I had given them much time to repent. You gotta follow, you all follow that. Now, why do we think America is spatial? Why do we think we're going to have a lot more time than any nation in the world ever had? Why do we feel that we're immune to being from persecution? Just like Israel did, right? Yeah. In, the Old, in the New Testament. But he said, when the Amorites' sin is fulfilled, the cup of sin is fulfilled, then I'll bring you back to this land because I'm going to judge Amorites. Mm -hmm. I'll purify the land for you. Now, is that powerful or what? Does that show two things? The sovereignty and mercy of God? Mm -hmm. yeah. He gave them 400 years to repent, man, and they didn't do it. Now, we wouldn't be as stubborn, would we? Oh, no. No, not that. Anyway. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt and to the great river, the river Euphrates. The Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Kenites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephims and the Amorites and the Kenites and all. Anyway, I want to take those out. And by the way, in those tribes, the Rephims and others were giants. Yes. They were giants. Yeah. Yeah. Remember going to that promised land, Barry, yeah. and looked over there and said, we can't go in there. Those guys are huge. I mean, Paul, they're great bigger than two men can carry. We look like, yeah. we look like grasshoppers. Yeah. yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So they, these, they, and, and, and God said, I'll give it to you. He told Abraham, that's going to be yours. Mm -hmm. But even when coming right down the time they entered, they backed out. Yeah. They chickened out after all this. And I, but don't throw stones at them. No. Look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So a covenant made right there with Abraham. We caught the Abrahamic covenant. The covenant. Hey. Between the Lord and Abraham. And Abraham, this is important too. Abraham had no part in it except faith. He didn't, he didn't, I mean, he, he had no part in the sacrifice. He didn't walk between the, the animals. God walked between them and made the covenant with him. Abraham accepted by faith. Now, when Christ went to the cross and shed his blood and brought forth the covenant to us, how do we receive it? Do, 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 do we have any part in it? Do we, do we have anything to do with that? Can we make the covenant work for us? We can. No, I mean, I mean, but can we can we save ourselves? No, we can't save ourselves. That covenant was given to Abraham without any cost to Abraham at all. You follow that? Mm -hmm. He did nothing. He he couldn't walk through that covenant and say, "All right, God, you made this, and I'll do that, and you do this, and I'll do." That. He didn't. He couldn't do that. It was a gift yeah. through his faith, and he was expected to obey the Lord God all his life. It's a covenant. 
Yeah. It's like marriage. Until death do you part. Mm -hmm. Which you don't see that now. No, you don't. But it's important to understand that Abraham did not have anything to do with that. God himself divided the animals and walked between them as a light. Yeah. Abraham laid there and accepted it. Mm -hmm. Well, when I went to the altar in 1971 at Olive Branch Baptist Church, and asked the Lord God to give my sins, I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I was I did not nail him to the cross as far as physically going. I didn't go up and, and, and grab his blood and believe us. No, I believe the faith that covenant he made with me was for real. He made a covenant with me, Joe. Sure, yeah. I had no no input at all except to believe what Abraham did that is true. Mm -hmm. Any comments so far? Enjoying so far? Yes. Learn anything? Mm -hmm. Now, 400 years later, and that just what a coincidence it worked out just like you said it would. What a coincidence, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. no. 400 years later, Moses shows up on the site. Mm -hmm. After Abraham's covenant, 400 years later, there comes Moses along. Why a dick? Why a, what a coincidence? That worked out just like that. Thanks. You know, what are you going to do? You know, what are you and Moses was, was to be murdered. Y'all know this in the Bible? Moses was to be murdered. Yeah. The Pharaoh said, or the, said yeah. we're going to kill anything two years and younger. Did that fulfill something like Christ also in the New Testament? Yep. Did that try to kill him two years and younger? Yeah. Moses was supposed to be killed. Now, if they could have killed Moses, it would have stopped the covenant with Abraham and Moses. Right. It would stop the salvation of Israel. It would stop the salvation of us. If Moses could have been killed, Satan tried to kill him. He had the king pass laws to kill the children. Mm -hmm. Now the midwives in Israel's time were righteous women. They lied to the king. Do y'all know it's in the Bible? Yep. Yep. They said, he said, these, he said hey, these Israelite children are born so fast, we don't have time to get there. They're born and they're all right. They lied to the king. And the parents of Abraham lied to the federal government and hit him. Hit him. Put him in, put him in a basket in the river. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. And the Pharaoh's adopted daughter found it and took him in and breastfeed him and raise him. They took care yeah. of him. She gave him to a, a handmaiden who had milk and he ra she raised him. Yeah. And he made it with his mother. Exactly. The, the mother was brought in to feed him. Yes. And the, the Pharaoh had no idea. Mm -hmm. Now, what a coincidence that is. Wow. My, I just marveled at this. That, that, that all this ties into the Passover. And, and the, I said the parents protected him. The Lord God brought him up in the king's house. Mm -hmm. Now listen, Abraham, I mean Moses had to make a choice. Moses was a, was a wealthy young man. He was the Pharaoh's son, adopted. True? Right. All the kingdom of Egypt, or all the known world, and listen, this is important. All the world that he knew of, and Egypt controlled a massive lot of land back then. They were, they were a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh would give it all back to him mm -hmm. if he would have followed him. Now, on the, on the mount of temptation, was Christ tempted by the same thing? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kelly, aren't the coincidences adding up a lot here? Mm -hmm. What a coincidence. Moses went through it and Christ went through it. Same temptation. What a coincidence, huh? I mean, what, what a coincidence. That? I mean, come on, folks. This is marvelous. Mm -hmm. But this Bible isn't real. You realize it's all fairy tale, they say. <laughs> That's what a lot of you say. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 1. That's what we're... I mean, the more you study this precious old book, the more you're blessed, the more your faith grows. The more you understand it. Yeah. Oh, oh. Makes you realize you don't know much, but you sure do learn a lot. Yep. Any comments so far? <coughs> Adonai, you enjoying it? Yes. Exodus chapter 1 lays out the outline of God's judgment on Israel. Let's read some of that. I mean, on Egypt, I mean. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into it. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but, uh, but just drop one down a little ways. Let's look down at any, and verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. Now let me let just sink in a second. The first Pharaoh made Joseph second command of the kingdom. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And Joseph was, was a man who saved Israel from a famine. Remember that in Egypt too. 
a wise counselor. He saved the people and Egypt from, from a famine that would destroy the land. And then come up another Pharaoh. Said, who to ask Joseph? Why do you mean anything? Now I wonder in America, there was a time when the people of this land, there were true believers, were feared by the leaders. Remember that day? When no one dared come out and promote homosexuality because the church would have kicked them out of office. Mm -hmm. We've been rioting in the streets. Now they don't know who the church is. You know, it seems to that when President Kennedy was assassinated, from that day forward to now, everything's changing. Oh, they, yeah. At that point there, people feared where the government was, I mean, they were afraid of us. And now we're. it's the opposite from that day forward. So now they no longer know who we are. Right. They don't care. And they put, they put them more in bondage than ever. The Israelites were put in deeper bondage under another Pharaoh. i got to ask you, have we been going in deeper bondage with every, every election? Yep. Have we not? <coughs> and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more than mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest, lest they multiply and they come to pass when they fall out, fall out of any war, they join also with our enemies and fight against us and, and go get them up out of the land. And therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh traitorous cities, pit them and Ramses. And I need to read the rest of that there. It's take time to read it, how they put them under more bondage, took away the straw to make the bricks with, and the, and the Israelites were working harder than ever and being whipped every day for not doing what's right. Yeah. Now, go ahead. Verse 14, just, just the first part of it. it okay. says, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Would that be relevant today, maybe? Could we're, we be... We're in hard bondage. Uh, and could we be in much more in the near, near future? Yeah. Okay. All right. Exodus chapter 12. I think we're living here. We're going to look at something here. Now, you need to read the, but the plagues of, the, of, of Egypt and how even God was merciful to Egypt. He started out with light plagues, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And finally, the final one was the death of the firstborn of everything in Egypt, the animals mm -hmm. and men. The firstborn will be taken out and killed on the night of Passover. Now, let that just sink in a second. All of the citizens of Egypt, whose blood, the blood, where the blood was not applied to the door, the firstborn in that household and the firstborn of all the animals were slain that day. Yes. Yep. Would that cause an uproar? Yes. I wonder if it was that happened. It would have an uproar. Well, if it did, we would blame us for it, I'm sure. We're the radicals. We're the radicals, yes. But look at this in chapter 11. I don't want to rush through this because it's too good, but I can find the right place to move to. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence, and we and we shall go when let you go, shall surely thrust you out thence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her daughter, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. In other words, go into the Egyptians' households mm -hmm. and get all the wealth you can. Yeah. We're, we're going to rob the world. That's what it says. Egypt was type of the world. Go in and take all the wealth you can from the Egyptians. Now, think about that a minute. He said, go to your neighbor's houses and take all they can get off of them. Borrow from them. Taste. Give me. Mm -hmm. You ready? He's fulfilling a promise he said back in, in Genesis, I'll take you out with great wealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another coincidence. Wow. And the Lord gave the people a favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt and then sight of the Pharaoh's servants, and then the sight of the people. Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even to the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and the firstborn of all beasts of the beast. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. You reckon that's serious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any comments so far? No doubt. Well, let's drop down to this John 12. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to, to you. Talking about the month of Egypt. Speaking to all the congregation of Israel, saying, 
in the tenth day of this month they shall take to them a, 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 every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for a house and if the house will be too little for the lamb let him take in his neighbor the, the next into, into his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating shall take your count of the lamb now this is I don't know how many of you ever been around lambs <coughs> yeah I mean, trust a little animal most of the time. You know, Bible theme and play with them. Mm-hmm. They took it into the house and took care of it four days. I have to think they'll attach the animal. I mean, it's just a little animal. Well, the right. animal's yeah. timid. Yeah, they are timid. You can housebreak them, too. Yeah, they took them into the house. and Anyway, your lamb shall be without blemish. That means no defect. A mm-hmm. male of the first year shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And he shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the, now pay attention. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Mm-hmm. Why would he say everyone is a lamb in the house, everyone in the family must, must partake of the killing? Because it was the blood. But why must everyone be why, why must everyone partake of it? The unity. But what was it that put the lamb on the cross? Their sins. How many of us how many, how many of us really have been crucified? Because of sins. Oh, sure. Sure. All the congregation of the born again were the reason he was nailed to the cross. All the congregation of Israel was because of the sin and the trust and faith in his blood. They, they all took part in the slaying because they're all guilty. Yeah. Now I want to ask you this. Was, was Israel, although they were uh, God's people, if they had to put the lamb over the door, I mean, I mean the blood over the door, what would have happened to them? They would have the death them. angel pass over and take him out. Take the first one out. So the blood's important in it. Mm-hmm. But they all partook in the killing of the lamb to signify they're all guilty. Yeah. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Could they have also used that that blood that that's what they put onto the doors uh-huh. door post? That's what they used. Yeah. Okay. Blood of the lamb. Okay, okay. All right. They all slayed the lamb of God, innocent lamb of God. Mm-hmm. He gave his blood that they could be saved. Yeah. How many have deserved it? None of us. They're probably none of them. <laughs> but he did it anyways. They did do that, didn't they? Yeah, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know what to do. They know not what they when do. When he did that, <laughs> that was the blood of the man being shed for forgiveness of our sins. Jesus forgave people's sin. Why can't we? It's, yeah. And if we don't, mm-hmm. I mean, we, and I want that way, this whole different topic. But forgiveness is not for the sake of the ones we forgive, it's for our sake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Verse 7, if you would uh, read that to us, Lynn, verse 7. Yeah. And they shall take the, of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Wow. They took the blood of that lamb and put it over the door post. They did it by faith. Yeah. They didn't see what they didn't see what was going to happen. Now, if you read the rest of that chapter, and I don't recommend you do it, you see how this was to be done in the way that it's glorified God. The lamb had to be roasted, had to be all eaten, one one eaten, had to be took outside and burned the next day, yeah. and and the cup of, of wine, if you didn't drink it, all be poured out the next day on the ground. Yes. Okay. But let's drop on down now to verse twelve. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the Lord shall be to you for a token, and the blood with you of a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now what's going to separate us from the judgment day on the wicked What's going to separate us from the wicked? Blood of the Lamb. Blood of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. Without the blood of the Lamb, we're going to be judged with Him. Mm-hmm. You understand that? Christ marking your forehead. So is it not sh- for sure then that we must make sure that we're part of the body? Right. Mm-hmm. We all quiet. It's, if you ain't questions, what, um, okay. What, what spirit actually, I mean, we, we had uh, Arthur asked a question about what spirit passed over. Was it the spirit of death? The de- death sp- yeah, I'm sure it's the it was the death spirit. Yes, yes I'm that's sure what it was. I told him. I wasn't sure. I'm sure it was. Okay. Now, verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. That's the first time the word Passover is used that I know about. Mm-hmm. 
kill the Passover. Wow. Well, when we looked at when Christ was the Passover, we told it really good. Any comments so far? That's when we take the blood and we put it on the door. Now, verse 28. And the children of Israel went away, and then as the Lord had commanded Moses, and Aaron, so did they. They not only heard, they obeyed. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Hearing and obeying are two, two different things, but... And the without action, obedience, the nothing will work. Let's drop on down now to verse 43. Now, this is important. This is very important. This could save your life today. This could save your physical life today. Pay attention. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There, there shall no stranger eat thereof. If you're not a born-again believer, you are not to partake of the Passover. Now let's go a little further. But every man servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. In other words, they had to have the sign of the covenant of God on them, which was in circumcision. Now, just out of curiosity, let's go look and let's look in 1 Corinthians real quickly. Don't leave the place exit. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go over there real quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look with me very quickly. To the verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the body of Christ. Now listen, do you know what I just said? The unbeliever cannot partake in the original. They cannot partake it today unless they damn themselves. Mm -hmm. Now is that important? You think it's important? Probably it wouldn't be that. Now, so today the circumcision is not of the foreskin, but of the heart. Right. Okay? The sign of the covenant. Any comments on that? All right, now let's go back to Genesis chapter 17. I'm showing this to make a point, folks. Bear with me. Genesis. Genesis 17. If you go into the partaking of the Passover supper, which we do in a little bit, you do it without the blood of the Lamb and being circumcised of the heart, you are damning yourself to hell. Just that easy. Chapter 17, verse 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac and with Sarah shall bear thee into the, at, at this set time of next year. And he left off talking with Abraham, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with his, bought with his money, every male among them, the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin the self same day as God had said unto them. And Abram was 90 years old, and now we were circumcised in the place of... That had to hurt. 99 years old. And Israel, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the place of the foreskin. And the self same day was Abraham circumcised, and Israel's son, the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money, a stranger were circumcised with him. Now, why was that important? It was part of the covenant. Mm -hmm. The sign of who belonged to God. You know, any, anyone that come to him in the old covenant... Had to be circumcised. And in the New Testament, some of the Pharaohs said, well, they can't be saved. They're talking about the Gentiles. They have been circumcised. And Paul said, well, let them have their way. Go ahead and do it. Just to please them. But it's circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh today. So I urge you, as you partake of the Lord's Supper, that you know the blood been applied and you're circumcised, circumcised in your heart. Any comments so far? I'm hurrying fast. Again. This is too, too important to hurry through to miss it. All right, the next covenant, uh, on the top of the Passover, was in Deuteronomy. Let's turn there. It's called the Sinai Covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Each time this happened, and the new covenant brought up, this, the sacrifice really remained the same, but it changed slightly to the new covenant, as Christ did in the new covenant with us. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, and verse 7, verse 1, I'm sorry. Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of, the, out of Egypt by night. 
Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd, in the place which the Lord thy, shall choose to place his name there up there. Thou shalt eat no living bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou comest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that, that thou mayest remember the day when thou comest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no living bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. Neither shall there any thing of the flesh which thou hast sacrificed the first day, and even remain all night till the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou mayest, thou mayest not, okay. But as a place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there shalt thou sacrifice the Passover at the even, at the going down of the sun, at the season thou shalt come, uh, come up forth from out of Egypt. Thou, and thou shalt roast and eat the, in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Now, I know this was a Passover commandment by the, of Mount Sinai covenant. It changes slightly, but had the same meaning. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, this is important you understand this because if you don't, you're not going to follow it up to the New Testament. It was done in the evening of the Passover. Okay. See that? Mm -hmm. Now, this is important. Any comments so far? The evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. So you go by the evening. It's going down the sun. The season that you... So when the sun starts going down, he said, that's the day before, actually, uh, the day before the Passover actually happened, that lamb was slain. Yes. Okay? It had to be. But the lamb had been slain, and the Passover had come, they'd all die. Mm -hmm. You follow that? Mm -hmm. It's important because we're going to read and find out why in a minute. Well, how did Christ fulfill this prophecy of the Passover being slain before the lamb being slain before the Passover? Any comments so far on that? I just go to Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. It's about to be a new, a new covenant brought forth. Uh, there's, there were lots of covenants in the Bible, but this new covenant coming forth for the last days. Mm, okay. Let's look at verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he said unto Peter, Christ, and John, saying, Go, prepare us a Passover that we may eat. Was Christ keeping the Passover? <laughs> and they said to him, Where what thought we prepare? Now, listen, I just read to you in, in, uh, in, in uh, for this read, Deuteronomy, that the Lord picked the place for the Passover. He said, Don't do it anywhere else. <laughs> Who's picking it right here? Christ is. Christ is. The same God that chose it in, in, in Deuteronomy said, I'll pick the place, you eat it there. He's doing the same thing right here. He showed them who he is. In Deuteronomy, he was God. And to now, in the New Testament, he's still God. He's right. picking a place, you're going to have Passover. Right. Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall be a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into his house, where he entereth in. And you shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there make ready. Now let that displease that I seek him in. He chose a place in the Old Testament. And he chose it in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that say anything to you? Mm -hmm. Y'all be very quiet. <laughs> We're listening. We're just getting warmed up for tomorrow. Those who have ears, let him hear. There you go. All right. I just read the book of Passover. I'm trying to find, keep my notes going as close as I can. And let's look now at, uh, let's see, let's go back to, we just finished, read verse 13. And let's look at verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said to them, With desire, I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and we'll do that a little bit later on and go through this. Now I want you to understand something. Please. This is important. This was a day before the Passover lamb was slain. The next day at 3 o'clock, they slayed the Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. right. Christ was eating the Passover supper at the going down of the sun. I just read to you in The day before the Passover. Uh, you mm -hmm. see how that, again, fulfills prophecy? He hadn't been slain yet, but he's eating the Passover with the disciples mm -hmm. as commanded the night before Passover. Before he suffered. Yeah. That, was but, the, that was always the pre-meal. Yeah. You know, they always had those two meals 
and they did the first meal <clears throat> as a family or a gathering group. And the second meal was always done as a congregation. Why is it, why is it we have, I mean, we don't take time to see the connected dots from Exodus all the way through to this. Everything was done in order then and now, and each one fulfilled the next. Mm -hmm. Christ fulfills so many prophecies that the chances of him doing it all were so astronomical, I can't read the number to you. It's huge. Any comments so far? Hmm. All right. Let's go look at verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks, said, Take this and drink, divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink this until we go further. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. What did they do at the Passover lamb? In the Old Testament. He roasted it. And he eat it. Yeah, he roasted it. What did Christ just tell us to do with, it, with this dinner? Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> he said, this bread symbolizes my body. Eat it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this juice, this wine, symbolizes my blood. Drink it. That's yeah. right. Now look at this, folks. He gave his body, he gave his blood for us to consume figuratively. And the, the, the Catholics believe it's real. The Catholics, the Catholics believe that this actually turns into flesh. And this turns into blood. They really believe that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Christ said, do this in remembrance of who? Me. Me. So Christ was the Passover lamb and is the Passover lamb. Mm -hmm. Every time we do this on, near Passover, we should do it. <coughs> we remember what he paid on the cross of Calvary. Right. Any comments, Joe? No. And it says, likewise also the cup after the supper, saying, this, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Behold... The hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. And truly, son of man, that goat, as it was determined, but woe unto him that, by whom that he betrayed. He said, this cup that you're about to drink symbolizes the blood I'm about to shed for you. Mm -hmm. But then he had the betrayal. Okay. Yes. Any comments on this so far? I think this is beautiful. So the Exodus covenant was made with the slaying of the lamb. Deuteronomy's covenant was... Uh, a sacrificial lamb looking back upon the, the first original Passover. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. All right, look at verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who was a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of kings of the earth, and to him that has loved us and has washed us from our sins in his own blood. Mm -hmm. Right there. Is the blood important? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you understand so far that what the Passover really is mm -hmm. and still is today? Now, we might have dealt with today in a, a plan about an hour, but I want to go through this. And we're going to go to Chris Corinthians. We're going to do the Passover together. Just a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. As we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. but, and, and the about it wasn't too long. Maybe this 200 years after Christ left this world. Now I'm going to say it like it is. Man, if you want to, the Catholic Church starts bringing up all the world, trying to change the dates and times. Mm -hmm. And they did change it. They went from Passover to Easter. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. They did. They started doing Easter instead of Passover. And Polycarp, who was a follower of Christ at the time, said, we can't do this. It's wrong. We're, we're planning to do the Passover, not Easter. Right. right. And guess what they've done to him? Okay. They excommunicated him, kicked him out of the country, so to speak, and said, you're no longer part of this church. Mm -hmm. Well, hallelujah. I don't part of the Catholic Church either. We're going to do that. But the Catholic Church, and I don't mean to pick on Catholics, but the masses don't know this, but the Catholic hierarchy started changing the holy days into holidays. Yes, it did. And how many pagan holidays do we worship now? Quite a few. You got one coming up. Yeah, we do. We do. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? This, folks, this ties together. So when you today say, I'm going to do Passover in most churches, what? You're Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Wrong. No. In Exodus, they give you one example on how to do it. Deuteronomy did it, uh, same, the same Passover, just a different style, and Christ brought forth a different one to, for us today, but it's the same thing. Yeah. Right. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 11. Get very close. I'm sorry, that Exodus, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. No, that's right. Okay. I'm, that's where I was. <laughs> Mm 
I'm looking at Aladdin. Probably should be after two later. I want to make I want to make some comments and check the lady before we get into what the scripture to read. <clears throat> Paul told the church, and this is not to be a drunken party. That's what I say, read for yourself. Mm-hmm. You're not to, this is not to be a glutton. So if you're hungry, eat before you come, because this is not going to be done. You're not going to sit there and eat the whole lamb. You're not going to eat a, 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 like they did in the Old Testament. This has been changed. Do not come to this fellowship, this Passover uh, dinner, and, and to become to stuff yourself. This is a different thing. If you're hungry, eat at home. Read it for yourself, mm-hmm. chapter 11. If you'll get drunk, don't come to Passover. Right. Okay? So Christ is making a point here that this is a special dedication now made and ordained by him for the, for the covenant, for the church of the day. It's still a Passover supper. Mm-hmm. But it's something we have to understand that this is a serious, serious situ- thing we're doing. We are about to partake of the body of Christ and his blood symbolically claiming that his blood and his body is broken for us and his body is broken for us. Now I would urge you before we do this to look inside yourselves and make sure that you're, that you're worthy through him to do this. I'm going to read to you scripture very quickly again in chapter 11 in verse 28 again. Let a man examine himself, and let, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Mm-hmm. Shall I take that out? No. I, has your heart been circumcised? But he's asking, are you circumcised? Mm-hmm. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among you, many sleep. That means they die. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You understand what you're saying? Judge yourself so you'll be damned with the rest of the world. Any comments? Any questions about this? This is the most serious service you're going to do in a Christian church. I want to ask if you, if Joe and Dick, if you would come over here by the bread. Because we're about to do something as Christ and universe in Him. But let's do it with grateful hearts, but with serious, <clears throat> with serious introspection ourselves. Look inside your hearts and in your souls and your minds. And don't, don't look in and think you're really perfect because you're not. But make sure the blood's been applied. What you're about to do is a very serious statement before the world. And God holds you accountable for this. So we're going to ask Joe and Dick in a second to bless the juice and the bread. We're going to pass it out to those who won't take this. If you've been born again, washed the blood of Christ, the blood will apply to your doorpost, so to speak, you partake of this. If you haven't been circumcised in your heart, purified by the blood, please don't do it. I'm talking about this, watching this on video, watching live today. This is very important. So. Nick, would you uh, let's, let's start with the uh, with the bread? Let's read it to you first. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do remember to me." Nick, would you bless the bread, please? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your Son, salvation. I thank you for His death on the cross, for that we may have eternal life. We bless this bread, and we are partake of it as Christ's body <coughs> and less than once is taken. Thank you, my Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And then he went on, of course, he said, This is the cup of New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often drink and remember to me. Joe, would you bless the Jesus? Gracious Father, please bless the wine. We seek this in the name of Jesus. That his blood was shed for us on the cross to bring forgiveness for our sins. And also atonement. We ask now, dear Lord, for your blessing <coughs> on, on the wine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Now, do you understand 4,000 years ago what happened? Mm-hmm. Two thousand years ago, what happened? What we're doing right now? Yeah, we're doing right now. Yeah. And what a bunch of questions happened in that? Mm-hmm. What a bunch of coincidences! I mean, what a coincidence! Moses came right on time, and all that. I mean, what a coincidence, folks! We are blessed people. Let's take it in knowing that <coughs> it's a solemn occasion. We are celebrating the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. We're taking His body. Would you go and serve the great people?
Jó, már nem. How make you feel been worthy to do this? Great. Isn't it beautiful? We did just kind of looks like you. Did you? You want to make me out? No. No. Thank you. Now I'm glad you're with us doing this. You're really in. I'm glad you're with us. Okay. Joe, would you mind serving the... Oh, excuse me. Folks have never done this on camera before. Wait, I don't think that, and I know we're not going to try to sing a song. Are you a singer by any chance? Okay. Before we leave, David, I want you to understand that how this come together, how Passover is still important. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. I can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm learning how to play that on the. Uh, Okay. <coughs> Verse 24, Christ talking, he said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Testament in my in my blood. This do you use often as you drink it, remember to me. This is to be a solemn occasion, and I want to be that way. But I don't want to leave with anybody a chance to testify if you want to. How many of y'all really appreciate what you just done? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't we all wish that we was innocent in the home when we was that precious little child? Yes. Anybody want to say anything? Anybody want to say anything? You've been very quiet today. You want to say anything? No. He's speechless. When Christ was crucified on the cross on that Passover day, I know that when I bring it up to people about Passover, like I did a couple of weeks ago, and people said, what do you mean Passover? I said, it's when Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and ascension is taking place. And that he passed over our sins. It wasn't because he died to save us. He died to pass over our sins. That brought us into redemption. Exactly. And, you know, on the piece of unleavened bread, <laughs> which represents the sinlessness of Christ, and then in the middle of that feast was the Day of Atonement, that being because Christ had presented himself before the Father uh -huh. in heaven as a wave offering, uh -huh. he, he presented us too. He did. As a wave offering. He took his blood with him uh -huh. on the altar. So through the wow. meal, the, the communion meal, we also are remembering that wave offering that Christ presented us before him. And I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but Christ was not crucified on Friday. Yeah. No, I can no. prove it biblically. I don't have time today, but he was not crucified on the day before the Sabbath day. Yes. He was crucified on a day before Sabbath day, but it wasn't the Sabbath day. No, no it, was, it, was, it was Passover day. The, 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 pass, the actual yeah. Passover day was called the preparation yes. Yes. day. Yes, for the no. Sabbath. Which was right. a Wednesday. No, a Thursday. Any comments? On a Thursday. Anybody want to say anything else? Anyone want to say anything? Well, folks, we love you. And by the grace of God, we'll see you back here in a couple weeks. Hope you enjoyed the teaching and the service. I'm glad you're there to take with us. God bless. Bye. -bye.
holy cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we walk. Saints and martyrs through the ages who have marched this way before. And they cry, oh church, take courage, it's your time to take a stand, time to march with hearts courageous through the land. We're marching on with hearts courageous. We'll follow everywhere you want us to. And should you lead us where the battle rages, let us march with hearts courageous after you. Marching on.